So today we're going to be extracting some niacin from niacin pills. Niacin is also known as vitamin B3, and the reason that we want it is because we can carry out a reaction known as a decarboxylation and convert it to something called pyridine. Pyridine is a useful solvent and catalyst in organic chemistry, and I'm going to be using it to synthesize a few things in the future. I'm going to be honest and say that I think it's much better to just straight up buy pure niacin and skip this whole extraction process altogether, but I decided to do it because it is a little bit of an interesting endeavor. Most of the other times that I've extracted things from pills like acetyl salicylic acid or caffeine, I just use an organic solvent to dissolve it out and then I evaporate it off the solvent. I actually did try to extract niacin using various solvents, but it didn't seem to work very well, and I found that the best method was just using a pseudo-acid base extraction. I say pseudo-acid base extraction because true acid base extractions require the use of some form of organic solvent, but I want to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, so I avoided solvents in this extraction. I think that my yield suffered a little bit because I avoided using solvents, but honestly, I'm okay with that. For this extraction, I used 100 pills containing 500 milligrams of niacin each, 60 grams of sodium hydroxide, and about 100 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. The first thing to do is powderize the pills, and to do this, I poured them all into a coffee grinder. Using a coffee grinder is a very easy and efficient way to powderize pills, but you honestly have to be a little bit careful. The powder that it makes is extremely fine and disperses in the air very easily, and it's very easy to breathe this in. When powderizing pills, and especially when using a coffee grinder, I strongly suggest wearing a mask to protect your lungs. After powderizing the pills, I move on to making a sodium hydroxide solution by dissolving about 60 grams of sodium hydroxide in about 600 milliliters of distilled water. Once all the sodium hydroxide had dissolved, I directly pour in all of the niacin pill powder. Using a glass rod, I just mix things up, and I continue to stir things with the magnetic stirrer for several minutes. Niacin, which is also known as nicotinic acid, is not very soluble in water. What we're trying to do here is react it with the sodium hydroxide to form its sodium salt form, which is much more soluble in water. We stir it for several minutes to try to get everything to react, but even then, there's still going to be a lot of stuff that's undissolved. The majority of the mass of the pills are insoluble filler, and what we're going to have to do next is filter this off. For this I did a vacuum filtration, and I really don't recommend doing a gravity filtration with something like a coffee filter, because the sodium hydroxide solution can eat away the paper. Anyway, once everything's filtered through, the paste at the top here is washed with a little bit of water. When we look at the filtrate below, we should be left with a pretty much clear solution. The solution that we filtered through should contain our sodium salt of our niacin, and I pour this back into a 1 liter beaker. I test the pH of the solution and verify that it's strongly basic, and our goal in the next step is to acidify it to a pH of around 5. To do this, I used about 100 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. By using an acid, we're regenerating the niacin from its salt form, but we have to be careful that we don't add too much acid. Before we use the carboxylic acid group to react with sodium hydroxide and form a water-soluble salt, but the nitrogen group of the niacin can react with acids and also form a water-soluble salt. Our goal here is to get the pH of the solution to the isoelectric point of niacin. The isoelectric point is basically the pH at which a specific molecule carries no net charge. In the case of niacin, this point is at a pH of around 4.75, and at this point it should be the least soluble in water. Using some universal pH papers, I test the pH and I see that it's a little bit below 5, and to me this is good enough. So just for good measure, I let things stir for something like 20 minutes, and then I move on to filtering. I move on to vacuum filtering it, and this time I use a Buchner funnel with a paper filter, because for some reason my glass fritted filter was having a hard time. Also this time we're not working with a strongly basic or a strongly acidic solution, so we don't really have to worry about the paper being shredded apart. Anyway, everything's filtered through, and I wash things with a little bit of water, and then what's left, we transfer to a crystallizing dish. As I transferred things to the crystallizing dish, it became evident why things were a little bit hard to filter, and this is because the niacin was acting a little bit like a non-Newtonian fluid. So just like cornstarch and water, if I let it sit there, it would liquefy, but if I moved it, it would clump up and become hard. 
I was honestly a little bit surprised to find out it had this property and it was a little bit annoying because I couldn't fully dry it using vacuum filtration. Anyway, I just left it out in open air and it very quickly dried up to become a nice powder. The final yield of niacin was around 55 grams and this is not even close to a super good yield. I've actually carried out this experiment a few times and I find that the yield varies between 50 and 70% but it never really gets better than that. I think the yield would be increased if I had a more accurate way to measure the pH and also instead of just filtering off the niacin if I actually did a proper liquid liquid extraction. Niacin isn't super soluble in water, but in about 700 milliliters, I'm honestly probably losing something like 10 to 15 grams of niacin, and I could probably recover this if I extracted it with an organic solvent. Anyway, in the end, I thought it was an interesting way to extract things, but I still highly recommend just flat out buying niacin and skipping the whole extraction process. Again, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, and especially those of you who donate $5 or more. I try to include the names of everyone who donated $5 or more, but if I've missed your name, let me know. And also, some people donate $5 or more, but they don't opt in for the rewards. For those of you who did this, I wasn't really sure if you wanted your name there, so I didn't include you. But if you actually do, just let me know and I'll add you on the next one. Also, I had a goal on Patreon for a while of $250, and apparently that's been reached, so I might have to be your slave for something like the next 6 months. So that's it for now, the next video that I'm going to upload is going to be about the fluorescent dye eosin, and I am eventually going to get to making the acetone from calcium acetate and all of the other things I've been promising to do forever.